Hi, welcome back to Bikes Fees. This week we're going to service this lovely giant TCR on this lovely colorway here. This one had quite a few problems. It wasn't working when it came in. The batteries on the DI2 system had gone, so it wasn't shifting or changing gear. You'll see towards the end of the video, we fit a new DI2 battery to solve that. The headset bearing was seized and solid. The chain was worn out, so this was a timely service for this bike. It needed doing and wouldn't have gone another mile without it. We do have this very noisy headset bearing and this is also very very stiff. The handlebars were very hard to turn. You would have been tramlining down the road. It would have been a very hard bike to ride with this level of wear on these headset bearings. And you can see here on the chain itself, it's at 1% stretch. It's way too far for a DI2 system. 0.5 to 0.75 is the absolute maximum you can stretch out a DI2 chain without it beginning to wear the other components. So we're going to take that chain off, get rid of that one and then start to strip the bike down ready for its service. So out come the wheels, we'll get those out of the frame and then we'll strip down the other components as well. We're going to discard this rear cassette, it was actually very very worn and we're going to actually increase the gearing on this one. So you can see here how these teeth have pointed off and they almost form like a wave flow and movement in them. They call it sharking, where the teeth wear out, where the chain is stretched. It creates wear between the rollers of the chain, so it actually makes them further apart, which means when you put a new chain on, it will skip over those gears. So that cassette was life extinct as well, so we'll replace that with the service. Out come the bottle cages. We're going to actually lubricate the threads on those, so we take those off and wash those down. Off comes the rear derailleur. As I said before, this wasn't working when the bike came in, but we're gonna give that component a clean up and service as well. You can see on the guide pulley there that it has built up debris from road usage. So we're gonna clean that up and also lubricate the pivot points on that one. Off comes the front derailleur. Now this mount bolt was actually quite corroded. You can see the white powder coming off of that. We're gonna address that as an issue in itself. Clean up this front derailleur make sure that it's all lubricated nicely before we put it back on the bike so you can see how dry that is there i'm going to take the chain set off i always do that because then i can feel the bottom bracket see what the wear is in there and actually in this instance the bottom bracket was smooth as butter so the bearing itself was absolutely okay so there was no need to do any work on that with this routine service out comes that and you can see the buildup of dirt and debris on the pedal arm there. That's where this bike has been washed down, but it's very hard to get in behind those cogs. So it's an area that's sometimes missed. So I can tell that this bike has been washed down by the owner and that we'll just take it to the next level with this service. I'm going to remove the brake pads. We'll clean up front and rear brake pads, clean up the calipers when we wash down the frame, make sure everything there is good and proper and okay for the bike moving forward. So out come those front brake pads as well. Now with the rear derailleur, I'm going to actually remove the jockey wheels, clean those up separately to the rest of the derailleur itself. So out come those jockey wheels, they'll go to one side, we'll clean up that casing and frame. But I am just going to pop in a cover into the DI2 socket there to make sure we don't get any water inside there. We don't want to wash water into the system and I'm also going to address that mount bolt as I mentioned there earlier. You can see that white corrosion on there, the way that's beginning to corrode up. So we need to clean those threads up and lubricate them with a little bit of grease to stop them continuing to corrode. So I'll just pop that in a vise, give that a little brush down with a brass bristled brush there, clean up those threads and that's now ready to go back on the bike. So I'm quite happy with that. Wash down the component. We're using warm soapy water here. We'll dry this off between this stage and the lubricating stage. Same with all the components that we're cleaning down. We'll wash those down. We're using one of our nylon detailing brushes there. They're nice for really getting in. You can see I can tuck that right in that fitting, get everything there nice and clean. It works in areas that you can't quite get in with your fingers in a normal cloth. So these detailing brushes are really, really excellent for that. I'm also going to wash down the bottle cages as well. Again, it's a good time to do that kind of work when it's off the bike and the axles for the wheels as well. We'll just give those a clean off. The jockey wheels themselves, I'm using a brake cleaner because it evaporates out nice and quickly. 
so it won't get into the bearings these actually have a bearing in the center of these ones so i'm just cleaning down the actual wheels themselves and then i'll put this back together a little bit of loctite 222 on the pivot points for the derailleur so they go in now do those up and once we've got both the guide and pulley wheels back into the derailleur we can now begin to think about lubricating it so i treat this like any mechanical component even though it's electronically actuated it does have mechanical movement so i'm using our general purpose oil there on the pivot points for the derailleur and a little bit of our premium grease on the springs to stop those corroding and i'm now quite happy that that's ready to go back on the bike it's the same process with the front derailleur here a little bit of our premium grease on the spring and a little bit of general purpose oil on the pivots there that comes out in our lovely syringe we sell these syringes in a pack of five or individually on our website we pop the link in the description we pop that on all our videos so any of these things you see on these videos you can buy on our website we're also going to lubricate the axles so general purpose grease throughout the axle there and then a little bit of our copper anti-seize grease on the threads and then I'm just going to clean up the brake pads themselves. Again, I'm using that wire bristle brush. These didn't need skimming. They actually got very little wear in them and there was very little impregnation on the actual braking surface itself. You can see there the one on the left is the one I've cleaned up. The one on the right is still to be done. They were absolutely fine. They didn't need any more work than that cleanup itself to make sure that they're okay. Next up though, I'm going to address this headset bearing. It was actually one of the worst ones I've seen on a bike in quite some time these are a complete bearing but when we took these apart they literally separated so the outer race and the inner race separated with the ball bearings in the middle that shouldn't happen that should all be one piece with a seal you can see there how the balls themselves have corroded on very very rusty no lubricant left in there at all they are in a sorry state so we need to now also address how to get out that outer also on the steerer tube itself you can see we've got this corrosion dust so we need to clean up that tube to make sure that that is not damaged from the compression of that rust on it so i'm going to knock out the outer you shouldn't have to do that these should almost come in and out with your fingers but again and the same with this bottom one the inner race and the ball bearings came out as one without the outer race that stayed in the bike and it shouldn't happen that should be one complete bearing and you can see that I had to give that a fair old tap just to get that out. So you can see this is the bottom race here, how it's in three parts, the inner and outer races and the ball bearings in the middle. It's in a, a very sorry state. Top one was the same, very dry, very rusty. We're going to clean those cups up. So I'm just using again a little bit of brake cleaner on these because it evaporates away nice and quickly and doesn't leave any residue. Clean up that steerer tube to make sure that that is still safe to ride and it wasn't too bad. There were a few little markings on there, but nothing that will structurally affect that steerer tube. Next up, I'm using our premium grease to seat the bearings. This will hopefully stop them corroding in the way they have before, where they bound into the cups themselves. So we just want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So a little bit of our premium grease on there. And this is how that bearing should have looked coming out. One solid piece. Same with the bottom. It should be one solid bearing, sealed bearing, as they call them, where you have the races and everything all held together with that seal in the middle to stop the residue and water getting inside the bearing. On go the handlebars now. So we're now quite happy with that bearing. Everything's gone back together there nicely. It's quite a fiddly little one that actually to do. And now we can wash down the bike. So we're using a nice little bit of foam wash there. And we're using our big softy brush to wash down this bike. We do sell these on our website. We sell the detailing packs on our website and a few other things that we've used in this service as well. So please do check out the website. The link is always in the description of our videos. And if you are one of those customers who've brought from us recently, thank you very, very much. It's a great way for us to finance the YouTube journey. We do appreciate those orders. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button and the notification bell. If you're one of our previous subscribers, drop us a comment. We do love the comments and we do get to recognize comments regularly and we always enjoy those comments i've washed the frame down i'm now going to do the same with the wheel this bike was very clean when it arrived so we're just wiping it over i did manage to clean the hub however which had a buildup of a lot of grime so that's now spotless i'm also going to sand the discs down as well i use a rough grit sandpaper to clean it up 
that will take away any of those little score lines and marks that are on that disc so that you don't get that squealing brake sound that you get it keeps that nice and smooth and i'm putting a little bit of grease onto the hub itself before fitting that brand new cassette on there so this is a 34 tooth cassette on this one customers told me he's about to go on holiday abroad and do a bit of mountain climbing so he's going to uh, be pleased that's on there in comparison to what he had he should find that a little bit easier getting it up the hills and then we're going to also pop in the chain set so in that goes into the bearing which like i said i've already checked quite happy with the way that all feels a little safety washer in the center of that arm we've just clipped that into the hole in the other side and then we torque that up as well now we can get that front derailleur on we're actually going to fit these components before we deal with the battery issue we do a little bit of pre-diagnosis on some of these bikes that we film and with this one i'd already pre-diagnosed the battery issue so there's no worry to actually put these components back on i'm quite happy that i know that there's going to be no issues once they're back on and once i've got the new battery in there we put a little bit of copper grease on the back of these pads it's because the actual pistons are metal if they had the ceramic pistons i probably wouldn't have done that but in this instance i do it will just stop the corrosion between the two layers and the same with that pivot point always lubricate the threads and a little bit of grease on the pivot arm itself and that will just stop all the binding and rust that you can get down there on those brakes very very common for those to have a rusty ring on the back of them and that can stop that problem by putting the tiniest amount of lubricant on the back of the pads we're not talking a lot it is a, such a smidgen on there you don't want to put too much on there because you don't want to impregnate the pads or have an issue with that on goes the front wheel now in goes that through axle which again has been lubricated on goes the rear wheel through axle we'll talk those up correctly as well when we get to that stage and i'm using a little bit of our copper grease on the threads in the frame for the frame fittings that will stop those corroding and getting any worse so we'll get those bottle cages back on the bike with that freshly lubricated bolt that should stop any problems and allow us to swap out the components on the fittings there if we need to we're putting a new chain on this one we actually put a durace chain on this one There's a little bit of an upgrade on the chain this one has a quick release link in it lock that off nicely and now i'm going to address this battery issue so we take out the old seat post the battery is actually tucked up in the seat post there you can see we disconnect that battery and then we can pop this on the bench for the swap out of the battery so there's the new battery there we had one cover in it which we pop back in and then we had the two connectors in the other two sockets on that battery so we'll just take out the fitting and take out the old battery swap those two over we have this lovely little fitting here that grips the seat post itself to stop that battery sliding around up and down that seat post so now we've got the new battery on there as well now we had this bit of tape on this seat post here i wasn't sure what that was there for but it was a little bit unsightly so we cleaned up that seat post and we're using our sealant and glue remover there and then we're going to use one of our vinyl frame protector stickers here to replace that tape that was on there and make it a little bit neater so i'm going to use the largest one here and create a template and then i drew that out onto there and then we have this lovely perfect sticker for that spot so that we don't have that ruckled tape that we had before and next up i'm going to update the firmware on all the di2 components every single component on the bike had a firmware update so there's the rear derailleur there then there was a battery update then the left hand shifter right hand shifter and front derailleur so once the firmware had all been updated we charged that battery up to make sure it was at 100 percent popped it all back together and now i know that the di2 is absolutely faultless and perfect all the firmware up today brand new battery solved all the issues that he had where he had no shifting whatsoever when the bike arrived but now it's shifting nicely cover that cover down and we're quite happy now that everything as you can see is working perfectly so the di2 is now absolutely spot on you can see that it's shifted up and down no problems i've had this bike in before so it didn't need any adjustments on either of the derailleurs brakes pull up nice and even on the front and rear again neither of these needed adjustment which is perfect now we just need to go through the bike with the torque wrench make sure that everything is torqued to specification both these brake levers were loose so very good to have them checked just before a big ride on holiday 
So we go literally from the front of the bike to the back of the bike, starting off on the handlebars and the headstock there and the stem bolts. So everything on the stem obviously is going to need talking up because we have changed that bearing there. Front brake, caliper, mount bolts, make sure that they're okay. Through axles, torque that one up as well. We've already checked the disc on the bench. Pedals, chain set bolts, which we obviously again we already did when we put that pedal arm on. And then the seat post clamp itself, which we've obviously had apart for the battery. Saddle, make sure everything there is right and tight. You can see there was a little bit of movement in that saddle, not too bad. Rear caliper bolt, check the torque wrench setting on those. The axle on the rear wheel, make sure that that's torqued correctly. And even the mounts on the rear derailleur. So we literally go right the way through the bike with a torque wrench. And as you can see from this before and after, very, very subtle. But from a non-rider to a lovely bike again, one that will do thousands of miles and this customer is going to enjoy his trip away on this bike with a slightly easier gear in, knowing that he's got a brand new battery, that there's not going to be any issues there. And he's sitting on this lovely Dura-Ace chain and this new cassette. And as you can see, this bike's looking lovely. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.